Coming up on Locked on Dodgers, we're answering your questions, mostly about the lockout, including rehabbing players during a lockout, what the Dodgers might do after the lockout, and whose fault all this stuff is. So let's get Locked on Dodgers. You are Locked on Dodgers, your daily Los Angeles Dodgers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Dodger fans. I am Jeff Snyder of Baseball Essential, and this is Locked On Dodgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm flying solo today. Vince will probably be back with me tomorrow. We want to thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every day. Remember, this show is free and available on all podcast platforms and on YouTube simply by searching for Locked On Dodgers. This is the daily podcast covering the Los Angeles Dodgers, bringing you the smart fans' perspective on our boys in blue. And as I mentioned, we're going to dig into our mailbag. We got a couple really good questions from you listeners. So uh, uh, not surprisingly, mostly about the lockout. Uh, But before we jump into that, I want to talk a little bit about some comments Dave Roberts had to say to uh, Kirsten Watson from Sportsnet LA. It's uh, it's always funny, these Sportsnet LA uh, interviews because or any of the sports in LA shows right now because they can't mention any players by name. Uh, But Dave Roberts, as no longer being a player, he is no longer in the union, so he can talk to sports in LA. And uh, he had an interesting uh, couple comments with Kirsten. First thing that really jumped out at me is he said, this time, meaning the offseason, getting ready for spring training, is really when I connect with the players. Right now we can't do that. We can't talk, so that's been different. And uh, it's like, I was thinking about Dave Roberts as a manager. Obviously, everybody has different opinions on Dave Roberts' uh, pros and cons as a manager, but I think everybody would agree that as a manager of people, he is among the best in baseball, uh, if not the best. He is an absolutely great people person as a manager, and that means that a lot of his job is done in the offseason. He is maintaining these relationships, and it's uh, it's got to be frustrating for him to not be able to do his job uh, in the offseason because the X's and O's during the game, that's only a small part of what he does. And uh, I was thinking about there was a a report earlier this week or last week maybe, Adam Wainwright is doing a charity event and Jason Isringhausen was going to be part of it. Uh, And they had it all scheduled. They were publicizing it. And then they had to cancel Jason Isringhausen because Isringhausen is retired and works for the Cardinals now. And Wainwright is still an active player. And so Wainwright is in the union. Isring hasn't isn't. And that means they're not allowed to talk to each other. Uh, And so they can't even appear at a charity event together. It got me wondering, like, like, I don't know if, uh, like Yachty Molina is still active and both of his brothers have been involved in coaching. I don't know if Benji or Jose are currently coaching, but it made me wonder, like, are they allowed to like have dinner together as brothers or is this whole lockout thing uh, impact that. Uh, I don't know. I I assume there's a line you draw somewhere where there's some common sense. But the fact is, Dave Roberts is friends with these players and he's not allowed to talk to them. And so it's not maybe uh, quite as commonsensical as you might think. It's weird that uh, a manager who, yeah, he's the manager of the team, but he doesn't actually have any say in negotiation. Like, I I don't know. I I, I understand it. Uh, I understand why it has to be that way. But it's it's still pretty dumb that Dave Roberts can't talk to his team because the fact is at some point, and Dave Roberts said in a week or a month um, or a week or four weeks, I think he said uh, at some point he's going to be their manager again and he's going to need to be talking to them. And it's kind of silly that he can't right now. Uh, We are going to talk in a little bit. One of you asked an interesting question about rehabbing players that we're going to talk about and uh, there, there might be a little bit of loophole there that uh, might be interesting to some of you. That's what we call a teaser. Uh, before we jump into those questions, though, uh, we had a, kind of a, a silly question from Ronnie Columbia at Ronnie Columbia on Twitter. Uh, and just asked, what are your thoughts on Mickey Hatcher? And now Mickey Hatcher, anybody who's around my age who was, you know, a big fan of that 1980 Dodgers team. Of course you love Mickey Hatcher. Everybody loves Mickey Hatcher and uh, everybody should love Mickey Hatcher. And, but my two favorite things about Mickey Hatcher are two baseball cards and I'm going to pop them up on YouTube right now. 
Uh, the first one is his 1986 Fleer card, where he's got this huge, giant, silly glove that he's wearing. It's just oversized glove. It's, you know, he, he's on the Twins, and it, it's not a, a batting practice uniform that he's wearing. There's fans in the stands. Uh, I should dig into this. I don't have any idea what the backstory is of this. I can't imagine he actually took that glove out on the field during a game, but I don't know what else to think. I guess it could have been a spring training game, but I mean, it looks like a major league, like a, a regular season game, and he's wearing that that big glove. It's kind of silly, and uh, that that's one of the classics of my childhood. I was you know eight or nine years old when that came out. When that card came out, it's one of my favorites then. And at that point, Mickey Hatcher, Mickey Hatcher had been a Dodger, but not in my lifetime as a Dodger fan. Uh, so I didn't think of Mickey Hatcher as a Dodger there. I just thought of him as the guy with the big glove. But then a year or two later, he came back to the Dodgers. And then uh, five years after that card, on his upper deck card, which I'm pumping up now, you can see he still has the glove. Actually, I don't know if that's the same. It might be. They're both Mizunos. Um, I'd have to dig in a little bit more. But uh, the webbing looks different. Uh, in fact, that one looks like a either a left-hander's glove or there's something different about that glove. So it's not the same Mizuno glove, I don't think. But Mickey Hatcher is still definitely in possession of a giant baseball glove. And I think that's great that uh, five years later, and this 91 upper deck card, if you're not watching on YouTube, maybe uh, pop it up just so you can see this. It's it's great. He's got his the bill of his hat flipped up like a goofball and uh, got the big hat hanging on his on his bat. And it's it's just a beautiful picture taken at Dodger Stadium, which is always beautiful. So uh, that, that's what I think of Mickey Hatcher. I love Mickey Hatcher, and I love those two baseball cards. So thank you, Ronnie, for that question. That's the hard-hitting analysis you get from Locked on Dodgers. One other question we'll jump into before our first break uh, about the lockout specifically. Kevin at Blue Goon 82 asks, what are we going to do when baseball loses games to this lockout? Who is mostly to blame? And that's basically based on the news that we got on Tuesday that uh, the league and the union met again and it was a fiery meeting and nobody was happy and the union adjusted one of their proposals a little bit, but uh, it seems like not much progress is made. Everybody was unhappy and right now seems to be on the ebbs and flows of the optimism cycle. This seems to be an ebb or whichever one is bad. Uh, optimism is not great right now. It seems likely that Spring training will be delayed at least. I'm still hopeful and optimistic that they won't miss any games. I, I, I think they could handle a shortened spring training, but they're going to have to start making progress. And as for whose fault it is, obviously in any situation there's some fault, some blame to go around. But the fact is right now the union is seems to be the only ones negotiating. The league has drawn hard lines on a few subjects saying we're not willing to negotiate these things. And uh, the whole point of a CBA is negotiation. And so uh, if, if we had to blame one side or the other, I'm inclined to blame the side that is refusing to negotiate. And that's the owners right now. So it's a bummer of a situation. Hopefully it will get better. Uh, we are going to talk when we come back. We're going to talk about a couple of specific questions about the lockout. We have one question about uh, what the Dodgers might do after the lockout, and another question about rehabbing players. So a lot of interesting stuff to talk about. Thank you for making Locked on Dodgers your first listen every day, and keep it Locked on Dodgers. So uh, I've told you about Built Bar before. Let me tell you a story about a guy I know named me. Uh, this afternoon, I was hungry, and I had just had a, a sandwich from Subway. Subway is not a sponsor, so it could have been from anywhere. We'll just say Subway since that's where it was. Uh, and it, it filled me up and then I thought, I want something sweet. And lucky for me, I had some cookie dough chunk built bars in my pantry. I went and grabbed a cookie dough chunk built bar. I ate that thing. It was perfect. It satisfied my craving for something sweet. It topped off that little hunger. It was a great way to top off my lunch. Uh, and so I got my, my protein. I got my veggies. I got all the good stuff. And then I got uh, a little more protein with my built bar because all built bars, they taste as good as a candy bar, but they're much, much better for you. Low calorie, low sugar, low carb, high protein, high fiber, all the good stuff, none of the bad stuff. So if you don't have a stash of Built Bars in your pantry, uh, you're doing life wrong. And you need to fix that by going to Built.com. You can use promo code LOCKED15 and you will get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. 
All right, we are back. We're going to jump into our next question. This one uh, comes from Sam Shearer at Sam underscore Shearer 99 on Twitter. He says, do you see the Dodgers trying to make any extensions before the season starts, especially guys like Trey Turner, but also maybe even Dave Roberts? And, you know, we've talked a little bit about some of these things in the past, but uh, it's also always, always changing. And uh, so I'll answer this in two parts. As for Dave Roberts, uh, I wouldn't be surprised at all. I don't know that that happened. Well, and I guess kind of the bigger answer to both of these things is once the lockout ends, the Dodgers priority is going to be putting together their team for 2022. And since Dave Roberts and Trey Turner are both under contract for 2022 already, they're not at the top of that priority list. Uh, you know, Dave Roberts said in that same interview with Kirsten Watson, he said uh, things are going to be quick once the lockout ends. And he said there's going to be a lot of player movement. And so, um, you know, he didn't go into detail about what the Dodgers' plans are, but it sounds like, you know, they have their targets. They know what they want to do once the lockout ends as far as putting together the 2022 team. And that's going to be their top priority. And so, I don't know that there will be time to get any extensions done before the season starts just because we are looking at probably a shortened spring training and, you know, basically a compacted off season where all they have to fit all their off season moves into, you know, days really, because if they fi- finish this up and they say, okay, spring training starts in four days. Well, uh, you know, Freddie Freeman needs to get his ticket to Glendale, if you know what I mean. Uh, I mean, Freddie Freeman's going to sign with the Dodgers in Glendale is where the Dodgers play spring training, in case you didn't know what I meant. Uh, so the Dodgers are going to be in a rush to get that stuff done. You know, theoretically, you know, the, maybe they'll start spring training without a full understanding of their roster. But in the first little bit of spring training, they're going to have to get that figured out. Then they might start thinking about Dave Roberts and Trey Turner uh, and other people like that. It was reported this weekend. You, uh, Sam didn't specifically ask about Walker Bueller, but uh, I think it was Fabian Ardaya had a mailbag. Uh, I think it was Fabian, uh, about somebody asked him about uh, Walker Bueller getting extended. And he said that the Dodgers actually tried to get something done with Bueller last year. He wasn't really interested. Uh, If you remember last year before the season, they avoided arbitration by agreeing to a two-year deal. And so Bueller is signed through 2022. And then he has two more uh, arbitration years after that. And so the Dodgers might revisit something with Bueller now that he's a year closer to to, spray, uh, to free agency, but I expect that that will actually be more likely next year when he's heading to arbitration again. That they might say, okay, now that you got two arbitration years left, let's figure out a five year deal or something like that. Um, but but who knows? You know, Bueller is an interesting one just because of his age, because he went to college and then he had Tommy John surgery, and so he is older than a lot of guys in his situation, and so he's already looking at not being a free agent until he's about thirty anyway. And so he may not want to push that back anymore. Uh, so it might have to be either a actual long-term deal of seven or eight years, or he might just want to push it to free agency uh, so that he can have that one big shot at free agency uh, when he does get there after his six years are up. Uh, but going back to the two people Sam asked about specifically, Dave Roberts, I think is... I think Dave Roberts will be and should be the Dodgers manager as long as he wants to be. And there's no uh, indication that he doesn't want to be. He is an excellent manager. He obviously the front office likes him. He's been very successful with the Dodgers. And so uh, I assume that that's not something that would necessarily have to happen during spring training. They could work on that extension during the season uh, or whenever. But yeah, I do think that an extension for Dave Roberts will be will be in the cards at some point. Uh, the timing is really the question. Trey Turner is a more interesting question mark because, like I said, they're going to be focusing on the team for 2022. Trey Turner is signed through 2022, then he's a free agent. And the interesting thing to see will be, as they're putting together their team for this year, do they address shortstop for next year? And the two ways that they might do that one way or the other one would be if they were to sign a shortstop who's a currently a free agent, like Carlos Correa or Trevor Story. If they sign one of them to a longish term deal, then that changes things for Trey Turner. It doesn't necessarily mean they get rid of Trey Turner, but it does change the urgency, maybe, of, of an extension for Turner. It puts it more up in the air because, obviously, 
Uh, Trey Turner is a shortstop. He likes being a shortstop. He didn't play shortstop for the Dodgers last year very much because they had Corey Seager. But as of right now, he's planning on going into the season as the Dodgers shortstop. So if the Dodgers don't sign a different shortstop, that makes it more likely that they uh, approach Trey Turner about an extension. Again, it might have to be during spring training or maybe even early in the season, and sometimes players don't want to do that, but it's a possibility. The other thing that might affect that is whether or not Gavin Lux gets traded because we do know the Dodgers might need to be aggressive on the trade market to address their their pitching needs. Uh, the Reds have obviously been one team that's been talked about, and Gavin Lux would be a an interesting trade chip that they have if a team is willing to to trade, give value based on his pedigree as a top prospect more than his struggles at times in the big leagues. Uh, you know, so so Gavin Lux might be a guy who could bring back some good pitching if the Dodgers trade Gavin Lux and they don't sign a another shortstop. Well, then they don't have anybody lined up to play shortstop in 2023. You know, right now they could at least use Lux as leverage with Trey. Well, you know, if you don't want to sign, well, we have Gavin Lux waiting in the wings. And uh, whether you believe the Dodgers would throw Lux in at shortstop or not, I think he would be a good shortstop. Um, but you know, if he is no longer in the organization and they don't sign a free agent shortstop, well, then it's like, yeah, Trey, we would like to have you next year and let's get something done. And so those are kind of the two big question marks that make it hard to to answer the question specifically about Trey Turner because we don't know what their plans are with Correa and or Story. We don't know what their plans are with Lux. And so those things will impact what their plans are with Trey Turner, if that makes sense. So uh, Thank you, Sam, for that question. If you don't follow Sam on Twitter, he's a he's a fun follow. He's more fun during baseball season when he's talking about baseball than in the off season when he's talking about Star Wars and stuff. But uh, Sam's a good kid, so uh, so check it out. Uh, I'm gonna come back in a minute. I've got one more question to answer about rehabbing players during the lockout. I've got some inside information from an actual Major League Baseball player. Got the scoop on how that works, so you're not gonna want to miss this. Thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every day. And keep it locked on Dodgers. BetOnline.net has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football continues its march through the playoffs right to the big game in a couple weeks. BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just football. BetOnline has up-to-the-minute info on pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, UFC, along with live real-time updates of current games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers available for the 2022 season. Bet online, where the game starts. All right, I am back for one last segment, and I got a really interesting question. We've talked a little bit about this, but I realized that I didn't totally know the answer, so I reached out to someone who did, and uh, I got some pretty interesting information. So this comes from Sloop Josh B., at shut up Joshua with underscores between the words, just to really underscore how much they want Joshua to shut up. Uh, but Joshua, I don't want you to shut up. I think you're a good dude who has good questions, including this one. During a lockout, what happens to rehabbing players who have been working with team doctors, trainers, etc.? Are they on their own now? I'm thinking of Dustin May. And, you know, we have talked about this a little bit in the past. And uh, I, I, I mentioned before that obviously the, the lockout didn't, didn't sneak up on anybody. It didn't catch anybody by surprise. And so the teams and the players knew that this lockout was coming and they were able to prepare for it. Um, And, but I I wondered if there's more to that. And so I, uh, I shot a text over to Ross Stripling, former Dodger Ross Ross Stripling, great guy, you know, uh, among major league baseball players, there's not many nicer people than Ross Stripling, just a great dude. And uh, he's the kind of guy who, if you host a podcast, you can shoot him a text and ask him a question, and, and he'll respond to you. And uh, I, I've done that a few times over the, the last couple of years since we got to know Ross, had him on the podcast here. And uh, so I asked him, uh, I sent him Josh's question, and I told him, I, I assume Dustin May and the Dodger staff would have made a lot of preparations. It's not like the lockout snuck, snuck up on anyone. So even though he's on his own, he has a plan for uh, from them and facilities to work out, et cetera. Does that sound right to you? Uh, and I, I told Russ, I, I don't need any inside information on Dustin May uh, specifically, just in general, uh, you know, any insights that he might have as a player. And then uh, Ross got back to me because he's a good dude. And he said, rehab guys are actually the loophole in the lockout. 
teams are on the hook to find him quote unquote MLB level rehab and the trainers can contact his physical therapist to stay up to date. The team can actually keep the facility open for rehab guys, but I don't think any teams did. So I'm sure he's well taken care of elsewhere. Most guys get to rehab most of the offseason at home anyway, so it's really not that different. So there's a couple interesting things here. Uh, One is that last point that, you know, it's something that makes sense. Uh, It's not like Dustin May was going to be spending all offseason in Arizona at, at Camelback Ranch or in L.A. at Dodger Stadium doing his rehab. He's going to be at home in Texas and, uh, you know, working with facilities there. Um, and like Ross said, the, the team helps him find a rehab place. And so even before the lockout, Dustin May has been most likely uh, rehabbing at home in Texas with a team that the Dodgers helped him find. And so that really didn't change. The thing that jumped out at me that that I didn't know, and this def- I, I've seen people like with blue check marks tweeting about uh, the biggest problem with the lockout is rehabbing players now being being you know on their own, blah 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 blah, all that. And and Ross pointed out that's not quite the same. That you know, a the teams do have to find them good facilities to rehab at, but also that the the team trainers can talk to contact. Dustin May's medical team, his physical therapist, everybody, and stay up to date. And so they can keep tabs on how the rehab's going. You know, they they can collaborate on that treatment still. Uh, you know, and I guess they probably aren't allowed to communicate directly with Dustin May, but the fact that they can talk to his team so they can coordinate that treatment. It sounds like right now in early February when Dustin May would be at home rehabbing anyway. Uh, sounds like re- there's really not much different that ju- because of the lockout than it would have been, except that maybe Dustin would be on the phone himself with the training staff, and instead it's going through his physical therapy staff there in Texas. But uh, that's not that big a deal, really, when you think about it. And so, like, obviously, it doesn't make me feel better about the lockout. Uh, <laughs> The lockout still sucks, and it's really going to suck if it costs us some games this year um, because baseball is good, and we want baseball to be played. Uh, but it does, you know, I like I said, I've seen this concern floated out there from people concerned about guys like Dustin May, a young guy, just had Tommy John surgery, you know, and being kind of thrown to the wolves, left on his own in his rehab. And the fact that that's not the case makes me feel a little bit better just in general. I still hope the lockout ends like tomorrow, but in general, it it makes it feel a little bit better. I thought it was interesting that Ross said teams can actually keep the facility open for rehab guys, but I don't think any teams did. Uh, I wonder if that might change. Uh, And I don't know. I'm not sure where these rules of lockout are laid out, uh, but I assume that Ross knows what he's talking about. Um, and so the fact that no teams did keep facilities open for rehab guys might just be because, uh, it's the off season. So guys like, like we said, they're rehabbing at home right now anyway, but I wonder if, as we get into mid February push in March, even if the lockout is still going, if the Dodgers might open up Camelback Ranch to a guy like Dustin May, anybody else who's rehabbing, if that is allowed. Um, and I don't know if it was a concerted, uh, determination decision by the the teams as a group we are not going to do this or if it was just that no teams did but if it if they don't have a a rule against it i wouldn't surprise me at all if the dodgers do pull in dustin may you know in in a couple weeks and say all right let's let's work on your rehab at camelback ranch with our staff and uh and see how that goes i don't know um i like I said, I don't know where these rules of lockout are, are laid out, and so it's hard for me to know where to look to find out what's allowed and what's not. Uh, but I definitely do appreciate Ross's insight on that. Uh, great question from Josh, and uh, it, it's nice to be able to ask Ross Stripling a question like that, and then he'll get back to me and, and be pretty straightforward. So uh, makes me feel better about Dustin May's situation, makes me feel better about a lot of things. But like I said, I still hope that the lockout ends immediately right now let's end this thing because uh it's time for dodger baseball just about it's february 2nd 2 2 22 today which uh obviously all those twos will remind us of another top priority once uh, the lockout is over for the dodgers to re-sign clayton kershaw but uh you know let's get this ball rolling because i am ready for baseball 
I'm ready for spring training to start and I'm ready to start complaining that spring training is too long Then I'm ready for opening day. So MLB, Players Union, if you're listening to this, and I'm sure you are, get on it. There's people like us who are counting on you to uh, pretend you're adults, negotiate in good faith, and get this lockout ended so we can have some baseball, all right? All right, good. Glad we had this talk. And I'm glad we had this talk, you listeners to Locked on Dodgers. It's been fun. Uh, I appreciate you making Locked on Dodgers your first listen every day. And now for your second listen today, check out Locked on Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked on Bets, hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available on all platforms. If you are not listening to or watching Locked on Dodgers every day, we would love it if you add one or two days a month to your rotation. Uh, obviously, if you listen today to today's episode, but you want to see those Mickey Atcher cards, just pull up YouTube and you know uh, check it out on YouTube. I also, you may have noticed, uh, if you were watching on YouTube, I flashed up the the questions from Twitter in graphics. You can read along as I read them. I thought that's kind of fun. And uh, it covers my face for a few seconds, so that's a good thing. Um, But yeah, if you're listening, watching, whatever it is, we appreciate it. I hope you know how much we appreciate it. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Locked on Dodgers. Vince is on Twitter at Vince Semperio. I'm on Twitter at Snydog. And the DMs are open in all of those places. Our email address is LockedOnDodgers at gmail.com, and our phone number for voicemails or texts is 323-863-LOCK-5625. We are here every weekday morning, and we hope you'll be here with us. When you get in your car or sit on your couch, tell your smart device to play podcast Locked On Dodgers. And remember, you don't have to agree, you just have to listen. We'll talk to you tomorrow.